So we know that he sold his birthright for something to eat, but let's get the story right here. Let's go now talk about the sale. We want to speak on the sale of the birthright. What about the sale of the birthright? I mean, just think about it for a moment. You have the right of birth. So on the natural level, the natural things precede the spiritual things according to the, the, the law of metaphysics. The natural things precede you know what I'm saying? The spiritual or the metaphorical, the mystical, even the mythical things are derived from the natural, at least the interpretation, you know what I'm saying, on this side, you know what I'm saying, on the physical side. So the natural precedes the spiritual. We need to understand that, especially as we consider the Bukhurna, the birthright as well as the status of firstborn. What's interesting is that the word uh, bekurna, bekurna actually means both birthright in the Ethiopic and firstborn. So when we were asked concerning to do a teaching on birthright and firstborn, we saw something here that was rather interesting. You understand that the Christ, the Mashiach, the anointed, the cherui, the chosen. That's another point you have to make. That the one who was the Messiah, the Mashiach. We're not speaking of Yahushua, but we're speaking of the, the messianic principle in the Bible. Or the Old Testament uh, Christology, for lack of a better word. See, in the Old Testament, the word is Mashiach. In the New Testament, it has become Christos. So when we say Mashi, Old Testament, Christos, New, we're speaking about the, the one who has the right, you understand, or the, the, the status of the anointing, the one who is anointed to be, in that sense, first, or the representative, the representative man. So Christos, proclaimed by Paul, our Gnostic, Coptic, Apostle, Hawaria, Paulos, he is frequently designated the firstborn, the, the Bakur. You understand? He is the firstborn of all creation, according to uh, Colossians 1 and 16. The firstborn from the dead, according to Colossians 1 and 18. The firstborn among many brethren, among many wondermoch. Quote, now hath Christos been raised from the dead. The first fruits of them that slept. But, the question is asked here in Joe Macy's lecture, it says, but in what sense? It is impossible to apply such descriptions, they say, to any historical character. No historical Jesus could be the firstborn from the dead. Now, many get thrown off by what, um, by what, uh, Gerald Macy is saying right here, you understand, because they don't understand the gnosis. They are in an ignorant, a not knowing form of Christos and Christianity. They're in the, the whitewash, Eurocentric, the, counter, the, 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 the counterfeit Christianity. It, it appears, it looks true, but then you have nothing to base that on. It says, if Continuity be a natural fact as held by the Gnostics and Hawari Apollos was a Gnostic and is maintained by all spiritualists and Paul was a spiritualist. We shall live on by a law of nature, not by some jugglery with natural law called a miracle performed once upon a time. This is also interesting if we go to study the word miracle. When you study the word miracle from an Ethiopic, Hebraic perspective, you'll find out that a miracle is not what you believe according to Disney and Hollywood and from a Gentile world, world view, a false falsification, calcification. But a miracle is something that is just epignostic. You understand? It's a high level of knowledge that has been applied to cause it and this is why most people say they don't know how, and it's beyond their knowledge, so they call it a miracle. You understand? But as their knowledge increased, they'll recognize the wisdom of the true God, the King of Kings. Now, the firstborn from the dead could not have waited for the resurrection until Anno Domini. Because the firstborn, 
is actually a spiritual matter, not a natural matter. See, this is why a lot of folks get, get Macy twisted. Macy is focusing first and foremostly on the European and the, and the Anglo-American madness, their misinterpretation, mistranslation, their ignorance concerning ancient Egypt, the blackness, the Africanness, as well as their falsification and calcification of Christianity, creating a counterfeit, a virtual antichrist, so-called Christianity, but calling it Christianity. And lo and behold, like the scripture says, most of the world is deceived by it. And just the whitewashing, that's just superficial. That's just what happens on the surface. If you think that's something when you recognize the natural fact that that Jesus or Jesus, Yehoshua, was black, can you imagine what they have done concerning the true gospel as well as the true spirit of the true Christ, which they have overtly and obviously whitewashed? You see what I'm saying? They have denied the humanity of Yehoshua HaMoshi, of Jesus Christ. So the firstborn from the dead could not have waited for the resurrection until Anno Domini, nor could our spiritual continuity have been demonstrated at that or any previous period by a physical re resurrection such as forms the foundation of the Christian faith. Now, see, this has to be understood in the context of what Gerald Macy is saying, because if you read on and read elsewhere, you recognize that Gerald Macy, he is a Christian, but not a Christian in a white, he's a white man rebuking whitewashed Christianity. He said, y'all got it all wrong. Y'all need to go to the root and the truth and recognize that the Kamites, the ancient Egyptians, were African black people. And you have to recognize that it comes from here because of these natural facts that then help to shed light on the spiritual fulfillment. The doctrine that was enunciated by Hawaria Paulos was Egyptian. Chaldean, Kabbalist, and Gnostic, and as such, it can be explained. And he goes on, and we're at page 35, he goes on to give a very good overview of what he's seeking. Because you have to remember this. There's a lot of disinformation that has been put out there. You, you know, there's one person cannot accurately and detail address every single issue. What Macy has done is a good deed for I and I because he used his intellect, he used his research to lay a basic foundation where we can now follow up on that and vet it. Now we're vetting it from an Ethiopic perspective and we find that it is right on. But there is a necessity of gnosis. There's a necessity of knowledge. You must approach it with knowledge. If you're approaching it from an ignorant, whitewashed, uh, counterfeit Christian, you understand, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, and counterfeit Christianity perspective, you're not going to get it. You're going to be like a lot of folks offended by it and say, oh, that can't be so because you're dealing with a lot of misconceptions because you have been deceived by that same great dragon, that revelation, the book that's so so least studied you know, in, in most churches. Most churches don't even deal with revelation. And when they deal with revelation, they deal with the same artificial, you understand, whitewashed, historic, so-called Christianity, which is actually antichrist according to the word if you judge them based on the bible you understand and it's not a be perfect and everything it's the basic intent you see the intent of modern christianity is opposite of what the bible is teaching in principle so it's not, you know, a lot of folks will bring in, oh, nobody's perfect, you're not perfect, nobody's perfect, because these are the devil's advocates. See, the devil's advocates are coming in with this, we're talking about, oh, that everybody should be perfect and nobody should have any flaws. We're not talking about having any flaws or shortcomings. We're talking about from a basic intent. You understand? It has been modern, whitewashed, Anglo-American so-called Christianity and Judaism's intent to be opposite of the clearly articulated and revealed truth of the word that anyone who base, has basic reading comprehension can recognize. You understand? And we're not the first to say this. 
many Europeans and white people, to their credit, like Gerald Macy, have come out against it and have given volumes of evidence why they have taken this stance against what by nature, being white like the whitewashed Christianity is white, that they should support, but it is such a crime against, against even just human reason and against conscience to do so. So they took a stand, and many of them in their own ways were, were martyred and were crucified for such, but we give thanks and praise for them in acts of the Almighty. Our God, Father, and his Christ may have mercy on their souls. You understand? Know because we regard them as our spiritual brothers and sisters, irregardless of their so-called color or race or even their, their creed. You understand? Know Beyond that, we don't speak on it. Just from what we know to speak on, that's what we'll speak on. And hopefully, y'all willing, we'll speak on.